Okay, so for today's video, we're going to discuss how to have a low quantity, high quality warm up. I know that when it comes to warming up, a lot of y'all are either lazy or don't want to spend the money to go to the driving range before the round. So I'm going to make sure today's practice or slash warm up, it's going to be minimal cost. Um, minimal time but maximum effort <laughs> all right so for the first part of the video we are going to physically warm up our bodies here I'm going to show you three full body moves that can help you activate the right muscles and get you ready to hit a golf ball first we're going to start with overhead squats this is going to get that lower body firing which is important in golf I would recommend about 10 reps for this for the next move, we are going to go into a lunge position and rotate as well as stretch at the top to open up our shoulders. And this should really get that lower body firing as well as open up that upper body. I would recommend about 8 to 10 reps for each side for this exercise. Finally, we're going to get ourselves warmer with some windmills. You can also replace this with jumping jacks if you would like. These are all just simple recommendations but there are obviously many other moves that you can do. So after we're done warming up our bodies a little bit, the next thing we're going to do is take our golf club and do some air swings. The amount that you do is going to be entirely up to you and how stiff or loose you feel on any given day. The reason why we are warming up our bodies and doing these air swings before actually hitting a real ball is to avoid interaction with the mat and the ball before we are ready for it. When we hit a shot, especially off mats like these, the vibrations can cause injuries to our bodies and so if we are hitting a ball before our bodies are ready to receive those harsh vibrations, especially if we do it on a daily basis, this is going to increase the chances of injuries. So I always get myself a feel, sometimes I do it left-handed as well, just to make sure that my body is rotating well before I ever touch an actual physical golf ball. Once I'm done with that and I feel like I'm ready to hit, I always start with small swings. So over here today, we're just going to do a very fast warm up. Like I said, we're talking about speed and efficiency, quality over quantity. I know a lot of you guys don't want to hit 50 balls before a round, but no matter how many balls you're hitting, we should always start with some small ones and just work your way up. And if you have done the warm ups and the air swings before this, it should feel pretty good for you to be able to take a full swing when you actually already hit the ball. So this shouldn't feel too strenuous on your body right now as opposed to if you were just stepping up straight to the driving range and trying to hit even if it's a chip shot you're definitely going to feel a lot stiffer just so that your body is warmed up enough to be able to receive those harsher vibrations that we were talking about earlier start with something small and then work your way up So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my back and I'm going to grab an alignment stick. So we're going to put the alignment stick down on the ground and find a target that we want to hit to and we're going to start hitting balls with an alignment stick. So the purpose of using the alignment stick for the next part of our warm up is to make sure that we know the direction that our ball is going for that specific day. So every single day you might have a little bit of a difference in your shot pattern. I mean if you're generally a draw player, you're probably still going to be playing a draw. However, on a certain day, you might be only drawing it 5 yards and on another day, you might be drawing it 10 yards. So having this alignment stick to a specific target so that we know exactly where we're trying to go and then seeing how much the ball deviates from that target, we're then able to kind of get an idea of the pattern for the day. When we know what kind of shot shape and pattern we're going to hit for a certain day, it not only makes it easier for us to trust the targets that we've chosen, it makes it easier for us to swing freely towards those targets. So having this alignment stick is a very important part of this warm up. I feel like a lot of people just try to warm up the body. However, this is an important part to be able to help us score well right from the beginning. Because most of the time when we go up there, we don't have a warm up. We don't know what we're going to do for the day. 
it's not only going to make our body more tense because we're trying to make sure that we hit it as straight as possible because we don't really have an idea of where the ball is going. So having this in your warm up, having that little bit of freedom in your mind, in your swing to be able to know that you've chosen the right target, especially right off the bat, is going to be very important for you to start the round off well. And obviously, it's always going to be an added benefit if you start the round off well because then you have less stress throughout your round. You're not trying to play catch up. So this is another reason why I always say that it's important to have a warm up because if you start the round off badly, you're going to have to play catch up the entire round. This is going to add more stress. So after using the lineman stick, we're going to go through our full routine and hit a few shots that way. Make sure that you're choosing targets during this and then see where your ball goes, see how far it deviates from your target, are you hitting it to where you want to go. With an alignment stick, that helps with your aim so that might affect it a little bit. So over here, we're really trying to see how much our ball is deviating for that day. So like I said, this is a fast and efficient warm-up. So at this point, I've hit 10 golf balls. I'm feeling pretty warm up. I'm ready to go to the tee. So we're going to go ahead and hit some drives. So if you know the course that you're hitting and you feel like on the first hole, you're not going to hit a driver, you might want to hit some of those instead, whatever it may be. Maybe it's an iron, maybe it's a three wood, whatever you're feeling. But I always recommend hitting something that you're going to hit on the first tee right before you go to the first tee. This is at least going to warm your body up enough for that shot that you're about to hit. For me, I like to finish with some drives because I feel like that is obviously the biggest swing in your golf game. So if you're able to hit some drives properly, your body should be fully warmed up. And I know I've only hit 10 shots, but at this point, I'm already feeling pretty warm with all the air swings in the warm up that I've done previously. So like I said previously, we're going through a full routine here for our last few shots, choosing targets and seeing how much the ball deviates from that target. So warming up doesn't only mean warming up for your body, it also obviously means warming up for the round that you're about to have. So shots like this, choosing targets, having alignment stick, things like this, these are all important parts of the warm up. So next up, we're going to go to the putting green. So primarily when you're warming up on the putting green, what you're trying to do is get a good feel for the speed of the greens. Um, many factors can affect the speed of a green, like for instance, it might be early in the morning, it might be more dewy, or they might have cut or rolled the greens, or they might not have cut or rolled the greens, which is going to make the speed different. So what we're really trying to do is first just try to gauge the speed for the day. And then what we're going to do is just try to get some confidence, make some shorter putts. So another thing that like for me when I warm up in the putting green before a tournament, I kind of have a little routine of what I do. So I mean it's not going to take more than 5 minutes if you don't want it to. For me it probably takes about 30 minutes. So if you only have 5 minutes, this is something that you can do. A few drills that you can do just to get a good feel on the putting green for the day and hopefully make more putts. So we're going to start our putting warm up with a speed drill. You can basically use whatever you have on hand. You can also putt to a hole if you would like. Over here, I just put my putter cover and an alignment stick which is about 2 feet by. And basically, I'm just trying to putt it within the putter cover and the alignment stick. So we're working solely based on speed here, trying to gauge the speed of the green. The reason why I don't putt to a hole is because sometimes you might make the putt but if you don't make it and if it doesn't hit the hole, it might have actually went 3 feet by, 4 feet by. So that's why I'm not putting to a hole. So this works well because some greens don't even have holes cut in them. So if your practice green doesn't have holes, you can also do this drill. It is great just to be able to get a good feel for the green for the day. Like I said, many factors can affect it. But having good speed is super important in golf because it's going to leave you much easier coming back putts if you were to miss your first putt. Having good speed is also going to lower your chances of having three putts and obviously Having less three parts if you are somebody that's struggling with putting is going to be very important and significant in decreasing your score without actually putting that much effort if you think about it because obviously it's a lot harder to improve the long game whereas with the short game, technically it's a smaller swing so having good speed and leaving yourself with better positions to have two parts rather than three parts is an easier way to significantly decrease your score especially if you're somebody who struggles with putting. 
So always work on the speed. Like I said, many factors can affect it. So knowing the speed for the day is super important to have a good day on the golf course. Additionally, if it is possible, if you're able to find a putt that's going to be uphill and then a putt that's going to be downhill like I'm doing right here, that's going to help your speed even more. We can always see if it's visually going to be downhill or uphill. But if we implement that in our practice as well, we're going to be able to get a better feel for the speed of the day. So I highly recommend finding an uphill putt and a downhill putt to do this drill. Finally, for the last part of the warm-up, what we're going to need is one tee and one little ball marker thing that you can find basically at any pro shop. So what we're going to do here, like I mentioned earlier, is gain some confidence. So we're only going to do a very short part here. It's only going to be a little three-footer and we're using the tee to mark our spot. We're going to choose the point that's right in front of our line and we're going to put that little ball marker right in front. The reason why we're having this small ball marker is because we want to be able to roll the ball over it without it deflecting the ball off. Obviously, if you use like a poker chip ball marker, it's going to deflect. So you do want something that you can press into the ground. So over here, all we're doing is working on making sure that we're rolling the ball over that little ball marker. This is going to show us that we're starting the ball online. And like I've always said, if you've watched any of my putting videos, the most important thing in putting is first to be able to make sure that you can roll the ball consistently and start it on the right line. If you're not able to start it on the right line, there's no point being able to read the greens ball because you're never going to be able to start it down the line that you want to. So this is just a very simple confidence drill to see your ball rolling over the same line every single time. And once you've done that, I would encourage hitting a few putts. It doesn't have to be long. As you can see here, I'm only hitting three footers and I'm going through my full routine just to make sure that I'm still rolling the ball end over end and to see the ball going into the hole. For some people, they might have to hear the ball go into the hole. So it just depends on what kind of player you are. But this is just a little confidence booster before you start the round. So now I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of what I do and my routine. Like I said, if you are done right now, that's only going to take about 5 minutes for you to do what I've just said. And you're ready to head to the team with a better feel for the greens. For me, I have a few things that I like to do before I tee off. One of the things that I do over here is hit 3 footers around the hole. So obviously, this is going to make you be able to feel the different lines and just hit 3 footers confidently around the hole. I am going through my routine here though, I do want to putt as if I am making those 3 footers on the course. So when that happens and when I'm on the course and I'm faced with a 3 footer, I'm more confident because I just made 4 from every single angle. So like I said before, over here it's all about just gaining some confidence, we're never really going to work on technique, not right before we hit. And even if we do want to try to work on technique before we hit, we're probably not going to be able to achieve much because Right now, all you're trying to do is gain confidence because at the end of the day, confidence does play a big role when it comes to putting. After doing that, I like to do something which for me again is just all about feel. I usually place a ball approximately a 3-footer, a 6-footer, and a 9-footer. We're not going to be super strict here about measuring it out or anything. As I said, it's all about gaining feel, gaining confidence. What I really try to do here is just to make sure that I make at least 2 out of 3 before going to the tee box. This gives me a good feel as I just made some short ones. Now we're going to make medium range ones just so that I also gain more confidence with any putt that I might face when I step foot on the golf course and play the round for the day. After doing this, what I do is go back to just some short ones. Again, like you can see here, I'm not really going through my routine, nothing. I'm just hitting putts just to feel the ball make contact with the center of the face. Once I do that, I call it a day and it's time for me to head to the tee box. Stop zooming it in on me like that. Go. Hey guys. 
Does it make sense? <laughs>